This morning I'd like to deal with you with something that the Lord has been dealing with me for a long, long time. I hear people talking about the church and people saying all kinds of things about what is the church. Somebody said to me, the church is a club where you go and pay your dues to become a member. He was talking about our ties, of course. Then somebody else, he said, well, church is a place where I go, I have to go, because if I die, somebody has to do a funeral for me and bury for me. And when my kids get married, of course, uh, I need a place where they can go and get married. That is the church. That is another interpretation of the church. Then there is another interpretation which you say, why you go to church? I go to, well, I have to go to church to feel good. Once I go once a week, I have done my duty. Now I'm okay for the rest of the week. That is another interpretation of the church. But all of those interpretations are not scriptural, by the way. And therefore, they are not to be taken seriously, but just as a joke. It is important that we know what the church is like. For we are the church, and if you don't know who you are, you're in trouble. Therefore, if we are the church, we must know who we are. We must know why we are here, what we're here for. There must be a reason, certainly. I, when I was young, I said, when the Lord saved me, he should have taken me home right away. I would have been saved and been home, and that would be fine, but he didn't do that. Why? Because he left me here, he left you here, because there is a reason for it. Why there is a reason, we'll look at it. What are we to do? What is our duty? What is our work? Is just to go to church, raise our hands, jump up and down, shout a little bit, then have a cup of coffee and forget all about it, and go home and stay home for another week? Is that church? Of course it isn't. That is only a coming together and enjoying ourselves. You can do that anywhere. You can go to a pub, you can go to a club, you can go to a home, you can go to a birthday, a birthday party. You can do exactly the same thing. Therefore, church must be something more important. It is something that, is, uh, that, that, is something that we have to take very seriously. For the, 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 uh, the interpretation of the church the church is an assembly of people who have the same mind and the same goal. Therefore, if you are sitting here, this is the church, you must have, we must have the same goal and we must have the same mind. A divided mind will never receive from God. The Spirit of God will not enter into a divided building or the divided mind. He will only come when he finds an accord, when he finds something given together, something that are bound in and they march on in the same style, in the same way. This is the church. In the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it says like this, The day of Pentecost, they were all what? In one accord, in one place. We are here in one place, but I, I will ask you, are we, are, are we here in one accord? We are here in one place, and that is good. But we must also be in one accord in one place. We must have continually in our mind and in our heart the, uh, the, uh, the, the application of the work in which God has given to us while he keeps us on this earth. Acts chapter 1, verse 14. Why are we here? The church are here to represent the kingdom of God. You are not here just to enjoy yourself for half an hour or for an hour on Sunday morning, but we are here because we have to represent the kingdom of God. I am an ambassador for the kingdom of God. You are an ambassador for the kingdom of God. And that is not only done when we are here sitting together, but it's also done when we are walking down the street, when we are working in our office, or we are driving the car in any time and in any place. We are ambassadors for the kingdom of God. That's what we are. That's what the church is. 
And if we are here for anything else or you have anything else in mind, it is false, it's not according to the will of God and the kingdom of and, and the and the will of God for the church. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8 says like this: But you shall receive power, and after the Holy Ghost come upon you, you shall be what? You shall be my witnesses, you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and on the uttermost part of the earth. That means that I am an ambassador of the kingdom of God. And wherever I go, I bring with me the Savior of heaven and the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's where I go. That's what I do. What are we here to do? We are here to proclaim and show the, uh, to the world the love of God. That it is our work. This is what we are we supposed to be doing. It doesn't matter if we like the people next door or if we don't like the people next door. It doesn't matter if they have a cat that comes into my yard all the time and messes it up. It doesn't matter. I am an ambassador for the kingdom of God. Those things are, those things are preliminary and they are not important. What is important is that they know that I am saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. I said, Lord, I'm not going to get excited because if I get excited, I get tired. If I get tired, I'm... And in Matthew 15, 15, he said, unto, he said unto them, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature, even the neighbor next door. Isn't it? That is what we are supposed to be doing. So we are supposed to be the ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are supposed to show to the world, even when the cat comes into my yard, and we are supposed to show unto the world the love of God through the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when I come to church, I come to worship. There is no other reason for me to come to church. I come to worship. Everything else, I must leave outside the door. When I come in, I come clean, clear before the presence of God with an open heart, with an open mind to get in communion with him and to worship him. We are anointed, by the way, to proclaim the kingdom of God with the same spirit that Jesus had. It's not any different. It's only that on Jesus came as a dove. On us, he came as a fire. Because he had to clean us up. And so we are the, the, the same spirit, which is the spirit of the Lord. God always has something, as a place where he meets his people. You know that? You don't meet God just anywhere in any place. I know that that is, sounds good in a Pentecostal church. In a Pentecostal church, but the real that that is a personally, of course, we can do that. But the real meeting of the placing of God, there is a certain place. In Genesis, we found that God came to, into the Garden of Eden every day to meet with whom, with the person that He had created, Adam and Eve. He wanted to have fellowship with them, and therefore he was coming every day into the garden, not somewhere else, into the desert, but into the garden that he had created. He had an appointment with Adam in the garden. When he called the people of Israel out of Egypt, and they were all in the desert, they could have met God no matter what in their own tent and say, well, that, that's it, I'm the, oh, my own home, I can meet God anywhere. Of course you can, on a personal basis. But we are not talking on personal basis here. We are talking about the church, which is a combined people, you and me, put together before the presence of God. God as a meeting place. And when he took the people of Israel out of Egypt, 
He created a tabernacle. He had a tabernacle, and that was the place where God was meeting his people. God had a meeting place. Later on, when Israel became a nation, they built a temple. That was the place where the presence of the Lord was. When the people that lived in Israel all over the all over the country, they had to come into the temple to bring their offering, to bring to have their sins forgiven, and to also have fellowship with the presence of God. Today, we are in the church age, and God has proclaimed by His power and His glory that the church is the temple in where He will meet His people. And this is the place where we come every Sunday to meet with God. There is no other way. How we meet with God? Don't we have the Holy Spirit? Of course we have. Aren't we the temple of God? They're because the Holy Spirit did dwell within us? Of course we are. Individually we are. The presence of the Holy Spirit is always with us. But it's important because the Bible also says that we are lively stones, Peter, first Peter, that we are lively stones, that we come together as many stones put together, that Jesus can build the house where the presence of the Lord will be. Therefore, when you come to church, you come as a stone. If you stay home, there is a hole in the wall. I'm not funny. It's not funny. And that hole... It's not good. Look how many holes there is today. That's not good. Because God wants a building that is perfectly built. And the builder, it is not a master, uh, the builder is not just a builder, but is the master builder, which is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Do you know that every time you come to church, Jesus has his hand upon your life and he seats you to a place and he says, stay here. This is the wall where I want you to stay. And now we cre I'm creating a house and with, through this house, I want the presence of the Lord to be there. When we come together, we are coming expecting that the presence of the Lord will be there. Otherwise, we don't come. What are we coming for? We are the church. Now, the first Peter chapter 2, verse 5. We are also lively stones. We are built we, to build up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer what? Spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. It's not how good I preach, it's not how much I yell. It's not how much I jump up and down, but that I can bring a sacrifice according to the will of the Lord Jesus Christ. In John, first John, uh, first John chapter five, verse seven and eight, it says, "For there are three that bear a cord in heaven, a record in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one." They are not three different people, they are one. There are, there are also three that bear witnesses on earth. That is the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three also are one. These are the witnesses which we must have every time we come into the presence of God. Well, of course we'll have opposition. The church has always had opposition. If you think that the world is going to like you, you have a wrong idea of the church. The world is not going to like you because they did not like Jesus, the Jesus our master either. Therefore, we shall have a position. Through all the ages and time, the church and the believers have been opposed by the world. Their building has been burned out. Their leaders have been killed. 
and my MNDA members have been dwelt unfair and they've been ridiculed by the world. Have you been ridiculed by the world? Are you offended when somebody doesn't agree with you? Are you offended when they are not exactly what you think they should be? My friend, you're not supposed to because they have done that to Jesus himself. And we cannot expect anything better. It seems that in our age and time in which we are living, we are living in a time of uh, uh, knowledge where uh, when we are in the church, everything is fine, everything is okay, everything is beautiful. Jesus takes care of everything. And my God, I'm so glad that he does take care of everything. But even when I go through the valley of shadow of death, Jesus is there to take care of it. You know that all of my relatives have been jailed. They were jailed because they were believing God. They were jailed because they were getting together somewhere like we are today. But there was no freedom to do that. And therefore, in those caves where they met together, or in the, under a tree in the forest somewhere, where they were meeting together, they were meeting together to praise God and to offer sacrifices unto the presence of the Lord. Either police will come, they will take them, they put them to jail, and there was no escape from it. Why didn't Jesus save them? Because I believe my mother said, even in jail, you can be a testimony for the kingdom of God. I remember a man that I met in Ukraine. I preached in his church. And when he was shaking hands with me, he started crying. And tears were coming out, out of, his, out of his eyes. And tears were flowing through his cheeks. And I asked the interpreter, I said, why is he crying? Oh, he said, because he's so happy that he's got a family that lives so far away that he doesn't know. And he's just waiting for the day in which he can meet all of his relatives from all over the world. Then they told me that this man was a man of God, that he was taken by the KBG many times and sent to Siberia. So every time he would come home, he would go into the meeting, they will take him and put it, go back to Siberia. He went to Siberia so many times. So he turned around and he said, well, I went to Siberia for so many times. He said, what am I going to do? I'm going to start a church in Siberia as well. You see, there is always a way of doing things if you are on some God's side. You can, we cannot take things and say, oh, well, poor me. Look at what, what, what's happening to me. What's happening to you, it is according to what God has provided for you. And if he's going to send you to Siberia, it is because he wants a church in Siberia. That is the church. That is you. That's me. That's what we are doing. We will always find opposition from the world. But that opposition must come for the glory of God. I remember I was... Forget how old I was, but it was some time ago. I was starting a church somewhere. It's not more than one, but this one here. I was starting a church, and I had a, uh, some baptizers from that uh, town, about 10 or 15 of them. They came to listen to me. Sometimes I don't know why, but they came to listen to me, and, and, and I was tell, preaching them the word of God. While we were there talking about God, there was a commotion outside, and that I didn't pay much attention to the commotion. But what was happening on the outside, that the, some people in town, they had organized a bonfire. So they brought some bales of hay nearby the church, nearby where we were uh, having the service, and they lit them up, and a big fire came out. Then they took some pitchforks, and they began to throw that fire inside the place where we were. When I saw the fire flying all over the, the building over there, I didn't think about the Jerusalem, believe me, or the upper room. There was something much drastic in there. And in Jesus' name, I said, Lord, cover each and every one of us with the blood of Jesus. 
the fire subsided and no one was even touched by the flame of the fire. Because of that fire coming in and not having done any harm, many people accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that something? No matter what, we have an opposition. Of course we have an opposition. But the opposition is there. And is there, it will always be there because they don't like you and they don't like me. I always say people don't like me very much, especially when they meet me for the first time. <laughs> the people, the, 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 uh, uh, through, through the ages, through the ages, people have been suffering and going through many persecutions. But they became great, and the church grew. It became great because those people kept humble before the presence of God. And they fought their wars, not with flesh and blood, but they fought their war by the power of the Spirit of God. For our fight is not carnal, my friend. Our carnal is not, uh, uh, not carnal, of course. And our weapon must not be carnal, but they must be weapons of our welfare. First, Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 and 4. For the weapons of our welfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds. They are. They can. They will. I can tell you about the things that happen in the earth. Some of these things that I've been telling you, they didn't happen in the old days. They happen now. To our much educated society, they're still trying to burn you up. Understand that. That's how much they like you. But if you look in the old ages, the history tells us that when the Christian church, when the Christians were taken by uh, by the Romans, they were chained and they were put into the Colosseum, in the arena of the Colosseum. I grew up there, so I know the Colosseum pretty well. And they were brought into the arena. Some of them were burned alive. Some of them were given to the lion. Some of them were killed by the sword. Some of them were just speared and killed in those arenas. But regardless of what the accusation was, or whatever the manner of dying it was, if it was burned or through the lion or through whatever, the testimony is simple. Those Christians, they stood together, they stand together, back by back, hand by hand, and all they did was singing praises and glory before the presence of God. Let the lion come. My spirit is free, and I will always praise and glorify his name. Oh, hallelujah. My, all, my, the, my uh, all the brothers did it, and I can do it too. Let the rain come. I still go to church. Let the snow come. I still go to church. I might feel not very well, but I still go to church. My father was an old-fashioned type of fellow. And sometimes being young, I didn't want to go to church. So I say that, I got a headache. Ooh, my headache. I can't stand it. It's really bad. Oh, he said, son, get ready. We go to church. We'll pray for you. I said, but I can't go to church. I'm going to stay home. I got a headache. He said, oh, no, no, no. He said, when you got a headache, you got to go home. You got to go to church. My father is not an educated person. Because in those days, you don't go to high schools and whatever. So I used to say, Dad, i got a lot of homework to do. I think I better stay home today. <clears throat> I couldn't win. No way. He didn't know what having homework meant. He only said, well, you can do it when you come back.
So through the time of persecution and hardness, hardness, in John chapter 14, verse 1, Jesus said, Let not your heart be in trouble. You believe in God, and you believe also in me. Who you believe today? Who is your belief? Where is your foundation? Where are you standing for? If you believe in him, then he is the one who will answer and respond to your need. The church possesses power. You possess power. We possess power which are spiritual by, by, by the spiritual gifts that we stand opposition from every direction and the gates of hell cannot prevail against her because the victory is ours into the name of Jesus. Sometimes when you get old, you get a lot of things come into your mind, but the devil tried to physically kill me twice. One time he's trying to get me down the precipice up, from up, up in the mountain. And the only way I'm still here is because I realized what was happening. I stood up and I said, in the name of Jesus. You know there is power in that name. And the second time I was walking in the streets of New York, I had a grocery in my hands. I was going home. When a man came rushing to me, yelling and screaming, and he came close to me, he, I looked at him, his eyes were red like fire. He was talking so fast I couldn't understand what he was saying. But suddenly by looking at him, I realized that something was wrong. I didn't know exactly what, but something was wrong. So I looked up in his eyes and I said, in Jesus' name, shut up and back out. You can be very funny, you can be very nice with when the devil comes in, you know. So what he did, he stopped talking, he backed down a couple of times, a couple of steps, and he slumped right into a seat, into a garbage bin that was right behind him. And he sat there and something fell off his hand. While he sat there, the police rushed in. And a lot of people that they were hiding, waiting to what was happening, what was happening, which I didn't know what was happening, they all came and they took him and took him away. What happened? The man had a gun on me, a loaded gun. I could have been, I could have been laid down in the streets of New York today, but I didn't. Why? Because I used the name of Jesus. There is power in his name. There are things that we can do and there is power in the name of Jesus that are, they are more and uh, greater than anything that we can think of. <clears throat> we have power and we also have the key of the kingdom which God has given to the church. The church is an unstoppable marching force in heaven because one day we are going to reign with him forever. And here on earth, because while we are here, we are growing from glory to glory until, Jesus, until the trumpet will sound and Jesus will be coming down from heaven. And we'll establish his kingdom here on earth. Here, my job is to be an ambassador and to grow from glory to glory. Those are the things that we, I have to do. Those are the things that the church must be doing. For on that day when the Lord himself shall descend from heaven, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, you know it very well, and therefore uh, if it's on there, it's okay, but put it down for your next study. That will be a great time. Because if I am still alive, my family will be resurrected. They'll be waiting for me, and together we'll go up. That's a good thought, isn't it? Yes, we go on to be with the Lord forever. We are encouraged by the word of God to run to the future with confidence because the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is with us. And when they are with us, we can learn. And we can go. So let us learn to worship in spirit and in truth. 
Let us be the salt of the earth and the light of the earth. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. The mandate in which we have is very clear. Jesus said, greater things shall you do. Do you know that? We can do greater things than Jesus does. John chapter 14, verse 12 and verse 13. I'm not reading it because time is going fast. How do I know time is going fast? I'm not looking at the clock, but I have a clock in my body. Therefore, if the church is so powerful, I will ask myself today. I ask why a church that is so powerful does not do what Jesus did. Why don't we see those things here happening in our mix? It could it be because many times we are here in church with our body, but our mind is somewhere else. It is true that we raise our hands in worship, but what are we thinking? Where is our mind? Well, we are here together. Our body is here, but where is our mind? Are we thinking maybe of the coffee that we are going to have when we leave? Are we thinking maybe where are we going to have a lunch? Are we thinking maybe of our children which we left at home and they are far away? Are we thinking maybe of something that we are not supposed to be thinking because we are together in one mind, in one accord to praise and glorify the name of the Lord? Our body, of course, is an express, is a, does have an effort into the expression of worship. But it is with our mind that we worship God. It is our mind. And our mind is the residence of the Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit, we touch God. We don't touch Him with our hands. We touch Him with our spirit. Have you ever heard the voice of God talking to you? He talks from within and from without. It's a voice that you hear around you and inside of you. Because with our spirit. So, therefore, we must guard our mind if we want to be successful. Philipp and how we do that? Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are good, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is any praise, think of those things. When? When I'm in church? No. Every day. Every hour. Our mind must be covered by the presence and the glory of the Holy Spirit. Timothy first chapter, uh, Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of what? A sound mind. If I adhere to those things, I will have a sound mind. We must ask, when we ask, we must believe in order to receive. James chapter 1, verse 6 and 8. To be, to, to be faithful, two important steps we must take. Now, I'm going to close very soon. So please, bear with me for a minute. By the way, I have another 15 pages at home. <laughs> yeah. To be faithful, there are two important steps that we must take. First step, number one, we must go to the cross for our salvation every day. Step number two, we must go to the upper room, or what the upper room represents, to receive the fire of the Holy Spirit from God, and to also have the wind in order that can, fi in order that can flame 
the fire in which the Holy Spirit has given to us. We need both of them. One is not enough. The anointed to proclaim the kingdom is in us through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is the same Spirit that Jesus had, which is called the Spirit of the Lord. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The, Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Is that what we repeat every day? Is that a time for us as a church? We want to see the glory of God. It is time it's as a church that we want to see the move of the presence of God, whereby as we are standing together, healings and miracles will happen because the presence of the Holy Spirit is there. Then let us pick up our banner. And let us believe with all of our heart that we can see the glory of God by dedicating ourselves to the glory and the Spirit of God. Let us remind ourselves. Actually, I think for a moment I was thinking this is on the closing thing that what we should do. Because the same Spirit that came upon Jesus is the same Spirit that has come upon us. I think that when the, 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 uh, the Luke, uh, Luke 4.18 is up into the screen, I think that we should stand up. I think that we should read it loudly. And I think that we should tell ourselves what we are, remind of what we are and what we do. So let us repeat it together. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me the broken heart to preach deliverance to the captive for the recovering of the sight of the blind and to set the liberty those who are free. That is your job. That is my job. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just shut your eyes for a moment. Just stay here, Joe. For, just for a moment, Joe has hit so many points there today. Do you have that place that you go to? Do you have that, that intimate relationship with the Lord? Do you just, are you one of these people that has come in like the seaweed that comes in with the tide, that comes into church and then goes out again? Or are you a person there that's built into that wall are you a brick? Are you that one that's, are you a person there? Or has your brick been removed? Do you feel like as if you're part of it? I just want us to reflect for a moment right now. And it's a good time right now just to, to say, God, I'm sorry. Lord, I, I just want to spend that time with you. I, I want to go to the upper room with you. Lord, I, I've neglected so many things. The reason the church hasn't fulfilled the role and and as Jesus said, these things that I do, you shall do also, and even greater things than this shall you do, is that the church in general has gone to sleep. It's believed a lie. It's, it's believed that, you know, it doesn't work anymore. It, it believes that, you know, that, you know, sometime in, in the near future, perhaps we're going to have a rapture and it's just going to take us out and praise the Lord. Well, friends, you better, not, you better listen to some of the people that are in the world today and overseas that have been... Uh, slaughtered and tormented and jailed and goodness knows what else. So today, why don't we just really, really say, God, I want to be in the wall. I want to be part of the wall. And Lord, I want to come into agreement because the power of agreement is so powerful. It's so powerful where two or three come into agreement. It's powerful. But when a whole church can come into agreement and believe for revival and believe, believe for the move of God, Spend time coming to the cross and thanking Jesus for the cross of Calvary. Thanking Jesus for uh, that we can go to that upper room. We can go up to that place and find the fire of God again. How many people just before God today would raise their hand and say, I need the fire of God again in my life. I need the fire again. And you see, the fire is the anointing. That's what Jesus said. He said, for God has anointed me. He's anointed me with the fire that I might go out and proclaim, to be that witness. People marveled at Jesus when they saw the power that he had. And that was the anointing. The anointing is the fire, the fire of God. 
So Father, today I just cry, cry out to you and, and Lord, I, I just claim so much for this church in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you just just build us. And Father, if there are people here today that we just love for Joe to pray for them, to, to help them. He, he's a man of 86 years of age, I believe. He's a man that's served Jesus all of his life. Has he had troubles? Has he had difficulties? Yes, he has. But today he stands before God today because of what he's preached today is what he believes. And perhaps today we, I believe in, in unity. I believe in, the, you know, one shall put to flight 1,000 and two shall put to flight 10,000. The prayer of agreement, if, if, if you can say, God, I want it, and, and Joe can agree with you today that, that we can see you know, those things broken over our lives, things broken and smashed over our lives that need to be smashed. So we're just going to open this altar to you today. We're going to open it to you today. And, and if you'd like to come, just quickly come this morning. Just quickly come and stand in, in God's presence and allow Joe to minister to you. Come on, folks. Let the Spirit of God get around you. Let the power of God get around us today in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we'll give you all the praise, we'll give you all the glory. We'll give you all the praise, we'll give you all the glory, all the praise, all the glory. To God be the glory, amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory.